Awesome. So a rock hoof in a hard place. Okay, this one's really fun. So remember, like, all of these really, really ancient, like this group of six ancient, very well-respected, um, you know, magical leaders of the past came back um, with the Pony of Shadows, and then Twilight came and saved everybody. Um, but you still have this, like, group of six really, like, you know, century-old guys um, and girls uh, that are just kind of, like, trying to find their place back in life. And so for most of them, like, um, starts with a beard and, and kind of most of the, the people here, like they go back to their respective homes and they go back to, you know, what they used to do in life, which was, you know, you know for some of them studying, for some of them was leading their societies. Um, for Rockhoof, like he just kind of like dug stuff all day, right? And he just like had a shovel. Um, but his civilization, like everyone that he used to know is like dead, um, which kind of sucks. Like everybody else has a place to go back to, a family, a society to go back to. Uh, but for Rockhoof, like his whole world, he goes back to where he used to live. And it's just like this huge archeology span site. And they're like archeologists like extracting bones and old um, stuff from the ground. Because like everyone that he knows is like, is, he's been gone for like a thousand years. Um, so he goes back to all of his friends and he's like, what are you guys doing, right? And they basically say that they've just sort of resumed the roles that they used to play. Um, because what people do, what do they do? They sort of figure out a path for their life. They figure out where they want to go. And then they get to this plateau very often and then they just stick there for the rest of their life. And that's sort of where they stay. And so as these guys fell off this plateau because they basically like turned into stone and like died for a thousand years. But then they came back they just come right back to this level of what? This level of comfort, right? Um, this is why it's so important, like as you wanna grow and you wanna expand yourself and you wanna create more success and abundance in your life, you need to expand this comfort level to new levels so that it's higher than before. You need to grow yourself so that you can become more so that you don't just come back to this same place you're in, especially if this place you're in isn't successful. For these guys, they were already super successful, so it was kinda okay for them to just go back to what they were doing um, historically. Um, and basically, like, they're all just like, you should go and do what you love and, and do what you used to do. And he's like, dude, what do you mean? I have no clue what to do. I'm so confused. And so he comes back to the school and he just has nowhere to go, nothing to do. He tries working in Ponyville. I mean, he tries like all these odd jobs and basically he just like destroys everything that he tries to do. And everyone that tries to hire him just can't hire him because he destroys their shop or he destroys their work or he's just like a really like big, hefty, destructive guy. It's just harsh, right? And so he comes down and he's sitting in the, the center of the castle, the center of the school. And he's walking down the stairs and he's so distraught. He has nothing to do. He has no clue what he's going to do with his life. He says he will never tell stories again. He will never be himself again. He will give up everything he has, live a dull, boring, distraught, painful life, which is awful. It's terrible because this whole world around him pushed him away and he had nowhere to go but down he had no comfort level to resume all he could do was fail and he felt awful about himself and this is why it's so important to create quality relationships that will pull you up at this point because the individuals in your life are the ones that will come in right here and say, no, you are more, you are better you have potential to be more, to do more, to succeed and that's exactly what happens. These guys didn't help him. They didn't understand his potential, which is, it sucks, but it's not their fault. They didn't see this new side of him that these students saw. So Yona walks in. She comes up to Rockhoof. She grabs his leg. She says, Rockhoof, please, please, please don't do this. Don't quit. Don't stop. We love you so much. We care so much about you and your teachings and what you're doing. Please come back. Please stay. And please become part of the school because we want to hear you. And she stands out from everyone else as the only one who's willing to come here and commit to this connection, commit to this relationship, and give to Raka. Give emotions, give praise, give genuine and real praise and say, we want you here. And so he understands this. And this is so powerful. I mean, I felt this so often as I start to like teach you know, people about personal finance and investing. This idea that the people that you like, teach can inspire you so much more than anything else, um, which is like insane. I mean, that's what like, brought me to write like, books. And oh my God, like, everything comes from expanding yourself so that you can have a bigger impact on others. And I mean, if, if you've ever like, taught anything, like, this is huge. This is, this is massive. And he realizes not for himself to do nothing, but it would be selfish 
because he understands now that these kids want him so, 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 so much. And so he goes outside and he starts teaching. He starts teaching. He starts teaching. He starts giving, telling these kids his stories again. He tells it outside, though, so when he's outside, he can't really destroy anything. Um, and he just gives this massive, huge summer, big, 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 big stuff because he knows that that's his calling. That's his potential. And that's where he needs to be. Not alone, not secluded, but instead with others having an impact on them and changing their perspective on life, changing their perspectives on reality and giving them stories that will fundamentally shift their whole life. He realizes that the impact he can have is worth so much more that he must make this commitment, not for himself, but for others, to serve them and to have the change in their lives that, this, that Yonah had on his life, right? Um, and so that's, that's one of the really, really powerful situations where just a little bit of praise, like all Yona did was grab this guy's leg and tell him how amazing he was. And that little bit of praise changed everything for Rakhov, changed everything for his relationship, changed everything for his future. So it's so, 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 so key. Like this idea of praise is so important because the moment that you master it, you can have a level of impact on someone that literally no one else can even try to match. Even if you just put in a minimal amount of effort, the impact it has is huge. So that's like one of the huge, 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 huge takeaways here is to always, always, always constantly, constantly give praise. Because imagine the impact that Yonah can have on other people if just this little bit of praise changed this guy's freaking life. Like praise in all aspects of your life can have an even bigger impact, which is huge. So you definitely, definitely, definitely want to focus on giving lavish praise, which is huge, right? Awesome. Okay. What lies beneath? So the, the little six, right? Like the kids at the school, you know, they're all together in the library and basically they're, they're studying for a test or something, which is super cool, right? Like you always want to surround yourself with your mastermind. You want to surround yourself with your friends. And even if you're just doing something mundane, like, I don't know, studying for a test, um, it's going to what? It's going to develop these relationships. It's going to con connect these bonds um, in a very, very powerful way because it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like as long as you're with the mastermind, you're with the power group, your power base, you're going to be developing that relationship and, and fostering growth, which is super, 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 super powerful. Um, it's just so, so cool to see these guys doing it. And basically, these guys are having like the coolest time ever. Uh, and then Cozy Globe comes in and she's like, how do you guys get along if you're so different? Blah, blah, blah. You know, all these negative things, negative thoughts, negativity. Um, and she's just like being a super evil little girl and like sowing the seeds of doubt in these guys. And we'll see kind of how that pans out very, very soon. Um, which kind of sucks. Um, but then they're like, you know what? Whatever. We're going to go. Um, and then Koza goes away after she's like been mean to these guys. And what they see is something that's really, really crazy. They see this grate um, in, the, in the library. And, and everyone's like, hey, guys, come check out this grate. There's like something glowing in it. And they find this like secret entrance to like this huge like cavern like underneath the school, which is like really cool. Um, and basically, right, like this cavern uh, was created again by the Tree of Harmony. So this, this, um, this like magic tree um, and the Tree of Harmony made this giant cavern and it's like super mystical and magical. And so all these guys are like, OK, cool. So we're going to go in this cavern and they go in this cavern, you know, together. Um, and what happens is really interesting. Like, it's, it's pretty sketch because it's like super magic stuff. Um, but basically, right, like they all get separated, right? And, you know, the cavern like closes in on them and they get locked in here, but they all get separated, right? And the, um, in front of them, they, they see like twilight, right? But it's not really twilight. It's like the tree of harmony sort of like trying to pretend to be twilight. Um, and so twilight, you know, comes in front of each of them and, and she's like, you know, if you guys can pass this secret test, you kind of see here, like they're still together um, before they get split up. Like Twilight comes in front of them and she's like, if you can pass this secret test, um, you're going to be, you're going to prove your friendship, right? Prove that you're like super important, that friendship's in your nature. Um, and this is like, you know, your, your test um, because she's like, are you guys a group? Are you one or are you, you know, destructive? Are you failures, right? Um, and like they sort of think it's Twilight, but you can kind of see in the picture, like she, she kind of looks like fake. I mean, she, she, she's a representation created uh, by the Tree of Harmony, so not like really Twilight. And then these guys all get sent off um, into basically like their worst fears, right? Um, their worst nightmares. And so like, a couple of examples, you have Ocellus, and Ocellus is basically put in this like giant room and there's just like huge like representations of the Storm King all around her. Just remember the Storm King um, from that, from the like actual movie, um, he sort of like destroyed the entire uh, empire um, and, and basically like forced 
Ocellus and, and everybody that lived in like her, her city to like hide underwater for a really, really long time and like basically like destroyed he like destroyed their lives, right? He was a huge, 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 huge source of fear in her life. And so she gets surrounded by tons and tons of fear um, by having these fake images of the Storm King. And then similarly you see like all of uh, the little six, they go into basically like some of their worst nightmares. Some of them are just like ridiculous, but some of them aren't. I mean, some of them are, it's really, really rough. Um, you see Ocellus, um, but basically like, you got Ocellus and then Ocellus comes and she's been like trapped in with uh, Queen Chrysalis, right? So she's got like Queen Chrysalis as this big, 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 like scary, you know, figure in her life that is like super mean, super evil. Um, and she's like, oh, I'm going to destroy you and take over the world again. Um, which is just like super crazy. And they're all being like facing their, their deepest fears, their deepest scarce, like everything that they think crush them is coming right at them. Um, you see Gallus, like Gallus, he's claustrophobic. So he gets put into this chamber that's just constantly crushing him in. Same thing with um, Yona. Yona, she is deathly afraid of spiders. She gets put into this like huge room just full of spiders. Same thing with Sambar. Sambar is so afraid of, of defying his teachers. He gets basically sent on this mission to just run with his teachers forever and ever and ever away from his friends as he follows uh, Rarity and, and Rainbow Dash. I guess there's one point where you have Smolder and Smolder um, her worst fear is, 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 is feeling like a pretty princess, which is, I don't know, it's really weird. But she's sitting here having like this tea party, right? Um, and her worst fear is that like, she's got like these two like really fancy people and they're like, come join us for tea. And so she sits down, you know, she dresses up and gets in this dress and, and like comes to have tea with them. She's deathly afraid of showing this, this side of herself to her friends, to her community. She's afraid of being transparent for fear of what others will think about her, which is so, 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 so awful. You have to stay transparent. You have to stay you. You have to be real and focus on expressing yourself, which is something that she is deathly afraid of. And what happens is really interesting. So you have Gallus, and Gallus basically figures out a way to sort of escape this, this you know, closing room. And Gallus comes over, and he's, like, trying to find all his friends again. Finds Smolder and sees Smolder, like, in this dress. <laughs> And basically, you know, she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and she's like, don't tell anybody about this. And they have to escape their fears. They have to escape claustrophobia. She has to escape her fear of being neutral and, and frank in front of others. Um, same thing with, with Sebar. He has to escape his fear of defying authority. And as, he has to stop following his teachers blindly and come and try to find his friends again. And he walks away and says his friends are more important than blindly following authority, which was something that was really tough for him. He had to overcome this challenge. And he finds Silverstream and he, he comes up to Silverstream and he supports her. And he stands by her and says, look, this is just shadows. This is not the Storm King. There's nothing to fear here. This is all just a fake display by this, you know, magic of the tree. And she has to overcome her worst fear to move past it and say, you're right. I am not afraid of the Storm King. I am not afraid. Ocellus has to stand up to Chrysalis and be yourself and overcome her worst fear so she can come back together and collectively reunite with the group, with the mastermind as a team who is stronger and more developed because as you overcome those tough times, as you overcome those worst fears, they have to come together. They have to be a group, a unit, a team, and move past this trouble. Uh, because as you overcome you know, your worst fears, as you overcome the toughest challenges you'll ever have, what it does is it strengthens you as a stronger person, as a stronger being, and brings you to a whole new level of development that only comes after you can pass this challenge right here. You have to pass this challenge. Have a short-term pain for that long-term gain. That's exactly what they do as a team, as a group. They overcome all of their worst fears. They, be trans they are transparent with each other. And they say what's up. They say what's on. Yona overcomes the spiders and befriends those spiders. Because it's more important to overcome that challenge and to move to that next level of success as a team, as a group. And that's what happens, right? It's the only reason that most of these people are actually able to overcome their fears is because of their friends, is because of their masterminds. Same thing, remember when Yona was able to get in the boat um, was able to get, you know, when, when Apple and, and Applejack and Rainbow Dash were fighting over like events. And they had to get in this huge boat. The only reason Yona could do it is because of her friends, because of their support, because of the mastermind that's been developing and developing and developing, um, which is so, so, so powerful. And we're going to see that mastermind really sprout its wings very, very soon. Um, and it's just so key to see this development here where they're actually solving real, tangible challenges as a group and as a team. 
because they're so much stronger together, both emotionally and physically, than they could ever even dream of being alone, which is huge. Um, and then at the end, you see Cozy come in, and she kind of discovers this secret chamber with the Tree of Harmony. Um, and so we'll sort of see how that plays out very soon. It's, it's pretty cool. So sounds of silence. So basically what happens is Applejack and Fluttershy, they get called to this land um, where they have like these creatures called the Kirin. Um, and basically like the story is that these guys used to be super happy um, but then after uh, they had like they were super super excited and super happy but they had an argument this one time where they had this like fight and and basically they all turned into like giant flaming creatures which was crazy because they were like angry and if they got angry they would like turn into big flaming monsters um, because they weren't able to like control their rays they weren't able to control themselves which is kind of crazy um, and so that was sort of the story behind it and they get called, you know, Applejack and, and Fluttershy, they get called, you know, by the map to come here and, and solve uh, this friendship problem, right? And so there's a little bit of um, just a background I want to give you, and then we'll, we'll move really deep into this really quick. But, like, as these guys are, um, as these two are, are walking over to this, to this city, right? There's this, um, like, hidden land, this hidden village, which is basically, like, over here, um, and then everyone lives here. Um, they have to go up this mountain, right? And as they go up this mountain, what happens is, is really, really interesting. Um, you know, Applejack just wants to, like, pound through it and go and go and go and go and go and just run, you know, through the whole thing. But Fluttershy is a little bit more cautious, a little bit more careful. And she's taking her time to appreciate the animals, to appreciate the plants, and to appreciate the world around her. She's a little bit slower, a little bit more tedious, a little bit more careful, just because that's sort of her personality. That's who she is. Um, and as they go through this process, like Applejack is really upset with, with Fluttershy just for being like really slow um, and just not really being up to pace, being up to par and going quickly through this process like, um, like Applejack is, right? She's just trying to pound through, pound through. And what happens is really, really cool. And it shows the power of taking your time and being really intent and careful with, with what you're doing. Basically, Fluttershy, um, she befriends some of these animals and they find like these really cool path um, and it goes through like some awesome awesome plants some really like special looking flowers which we'll kind of get to later um, and they find this shortcut that like actually goes through a little cavern and it goes right over to this place where they're trying to find um, by skipping tons and tons of mountains and challenges and stuff in the way and it's just like a little secret way that all the animals know to go from this path over to the actual secret town and so because Fluttershy was nice and she took her time and she was careful and she gave her energy and her effort and her focus and she gave praise to these animals and cared about them they were actually able to make it to the end result much much faster than if they tried to go this long tedious route around the whole mountain whole you know village this wouldn't really work as well and so that's sort of the base of this as we start to see these differing perspectives where one of them is just like go super fast the other ones take a minute to step back and so they get to this town um together right and basically like they're trying to introduce themselves to everybody and the ruler of the uh, the town you know the leader she's like super huge and she comes out um, but the thing is like none of these guys talk like they just they just don't talk um, and so these guys are like trying to introduce themselves and ask them who they are and they just they just don't like say anything they don't speak like nothing happened and basically they start arguing in front of them they're like what are we supposed to do how are we supposed to make this work um, and you kind of see like they're just sort of upset and they, they have no clue what to do and they're letting this little bit of tension that kind of stemmed earlier again this idea of a little bit of tension growing and growing and growing they're letting it sort of get at them and so they realize this and they do the right thing and they say look you know what we're having a little bit of a challenge we're having a little bit of a breakdown let's take a minute step back, chill out, and walk away and see what we can do here to, to actually ramify the situation and figure out why no one's freaking talking. And so basically, like, Applejack decides that she's going to go and try to find some um, secret answer out in the forest. And Fluttershy sort of stays here and tries to, like, speak with these guys and be more intimate with them and try to figure out what's going on, even though they don't actually, like, talk to her. Um, and as Applejack goes out in the middle of the forest, she finds this, this one, uh, they, they're like their own little species of the Kirin. And she finds this one Kieran who like is talking um, and she like speaks and she's like living in the middle of the forest like in this tree house um, and that's sort of where we get to this next aspect which is so so huge let's go right into that I hope it's not a sore subject but you mind explaining why y'all went quiet in the first place it's a long story <sighs> you'd rather not talk about it no I understand. I'd rather see La 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 la
you can sing. We weren't always quiet. We told stories and funny jokes. My stand up was a riot. But then one day a fight broke out, and hurtful words were said. Flaring tempers were inflamed. Destruction quickly spread. And flaming red from head to head, it even burnt our bread. Sorry, I forgot how much I love rhyming. Where was I? Oh, oh right! My happy village lay in ruins. Relationships got worse. Spoiler alert, we quickly learned that words could be a curse. No more talking, yelled our leader. The last thing said aloud. Into the stream of silence, we stepped as a crowd. The water cooled emotions, and peace was soon restored. But with no way to speak my thoughts, I got super bored. Seriously, there's only so long that Sudoku can keep you entertained. Cause rainbows won't light up the sky unless you let it rain. And shiny apples sometimes come with worms. Now you can't give up your laughter cause you're scared of a little pain. It's a lesson that the Kirin never learned. I was stuck in silent prison with the voices in my head. Till I tripped over my salvation in a helpful flower bed. I found a cure to clear my pipes, and I became quite chatty. With years and years of stored up words, I drove my village batty. They didn't like my jokes and songs, and they let dose of news. The plays I wrote, the speeches spoke, variety reviews. Or the story about the Kieran who hit below an opera stage. And this opera singer and he wore a freaky half mask thing and he played the organ a lot and got all broody because the singer was in love with another dude so he took her away on this underground gondola i mean who doesn't love musical theater the village leader made it clear i had to make my choice i could stay and live with them or i could keep my voice so i came here but left the couch alone they're hard to move with just the view for company until you heard me groove take it away Sometimes you go And so she is just devastated, just distraught, because everyone she knows has just abandoned their hopes of a better future. They have given up on an ideal world of actual civilization and real life because they're afraid of what? They're afraid of pain. They're afraid of this fire, this destruction that they once had um, that just abolished and, and really crushed their, their village, right? And so the only one of them who can actually speak has basically just been kicked out to live alone because they don't want to take a chance. They don't want to take a small little risk of actually having, you know, any kind of argument whatsoever for the huge payoff and return of having a real collective collaborative society, which is just awful. Um, and so the, for the rest of the episode, right, you've got you know, Applejack and she comes back with, with, um, with her and they, and they meet up with Fluttershy. Um, and they're like, you know, this is, this is it, man. We have to show these guys that there is a better way and that it is worth, you know, this, this idea that there's a challenge, this idea that there is a potential for harm, but it's not worth being isolated or destroying a society, crushing all possible relationships just to have peace, right? You have to be willing to risk, right? And so that's, that's I mean, it's just so powerful. And so you kind of heard she talked about those special flowers. Basically, those are the flowers that Fluttershy found earlier when they were walking through the forest. So it actually worked out really, really well that Applejack and Fluttershy had sort of conflicting skills because, you know, she didn't know how to find the flowers, right? Um, and so the only way that they actually find, found those flowers um, was by, you know, Autumn Blaze. She, she, she was the, the, the one who could talk. The other way they can find the flowers is by Fluttershy going back to the animals and getting all these flowers. And then, you know, kind of seeing the picture, like, basically, um, she, she just, like, puts all these flowers in the f fountain in the middle of the city. And the thing is, like, no one wants to drink this potion, right? So Applejack and Fluttershy have to convince everyone that, like, it's worth a chance. It's worth being together. It's worth 
connecting and having this voice for themselves. And they just have to be able to control it. And they show them that they, you know, they, they show them that like they had an argument earlier and they show these guys that they had an argument, but they're still friends. They're still together and they still move past that to a better future. And they still can move past an argument to have success. They can move past an argument to have, you know, maybe some short-term harm, but some long-term growth, right? They realize that they just have to show them that this is possible and doesn't have to just keep going down forever and ever and ever and ever. And they convince everyone to drink this magic potion um, and then, you know, clear their voice and speak again and be themselves and be true and be real, which is the most important thing, right? But you have to be transparent. You have to be open. You can't just cut off everything you have for fear of some you know, bogus result, right? There's, it's this idea that people would literally stop everything they're doing and give up on their hopes and dreams just so that they wouldn't have to feel pain, which is bogus, all right? Anything in life that you do, you're gonna have success, right? But you're also gonna have failures. And you can't let these single failures stop you from having these huge successes in all other aspects of your life. You've got to overcome that crap. Experience. I remember when I first started investing, I lost like a hundred grand with crypto. Like, ah, my gosh. Um, and made so much more with it too. But like, like, dude, it sucks to lose six figures, which is like really, 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 really cool. Um, and so you just kind of have to overcome and, and just push through. Um, just, oh my God, so good. So good, so good, so good, so good. So good.